Twenty years ago, a group of actors, myself included, started touring. At that time, that theatre was a new idea to hearing people. We didn't know if hearing people would attend our performances. That was the start of the National Theatre of the Deaf. Today, the MTV actors and actresses are well respected, and people all over the world come to see their plays. Each night is like opening night. People love this play, the Dybbuk. The Dybbuk is a spiritual play. It's a spiritual experience. And today, people are focusing more and more on that need. My job as an actress is to do the best I can every night. Every night is like my first performance. Of course, of course. I'll bring the drugs at once. You hold it. I think that this year we have a very special company because everyone is aware of each other's personal space. And if we invade that space, we recognize when to back out. We respect each other. When the interaction is good, we respect that too. We try very hard not to annoy each other or bother a fellow actor by constant chit-chat. We let them read or sleep. If they feel like talking, we'll know. We know when it's time to eat together. We live in very close quarters, and I think it's amazing that we have gotten along so well. Our philosophy is, no matter how many people are in the audience, or what time we're in, we all start to do our best. You can't adjust the show for each audience. Now in Brooklyn's case, if we go to Boston, we know we have a large enough audience and lots of old friends. Whereas, if we're in a small town, you never know. There may be no good people to show, but the performances are all the same. We want to be sure that we give a performance that hasn't been seen before, one that inspires through the use of sign language and voice on stage. People are often awed by that. The hearing audience will always have that experience because you can see the signs and hear the signs too. It's a wonderful experience for them. It doesn't matter where they're from. For the deaf audience, it's important that they see that we can do these things. And we hope that they can do these things too. I was actors of this town. We work all over the end of other actors. We were able to have a sign with that human in the town. Or we were at our summer school. That's people we knew you. Well, they wouldn't say, we're here to help you. It says, we need you. It's production needs to have been one of the strengths of this company. I always make a point of asking audience members if they like the play, especially deaf people. I meet a lot of old friends on the road. Some of them I knew from camp, others I met while teaching at Dollar Dead for 10 years, and some of them are old school days in New York. That's a lot of people over the years. When I ask them what they think of the show, they generally say that they honestly enjoyed it. Some say it's the best they've ever seen. 
Now I can't use that to join the performance because I don't know how many they've seen before. It doesn't matter if they enjoy it. I enjoy the play, and I want to go to work. It's my entertainment. I picked this because it's a one-of-a-kind experience. How many people have an opportunity to come together and work as a group, as an ensemble? It's a challenging experience that I don't think many theater companies have. Deaf actors in this company have that ensemble experience. Where else is it for us? If one or two deaf people were working with a hearing company, it would be a different experience, a very different experience. I appreciate this so much because I won't have the same opportunity again. And I'm loving. I don't want to leave. I want to embrace these tears they involve. And that's why they are so sad and empty. So silent and so melancholy. I wish I were not really alone, but my heart aches with tenderness. 